You hear that noise? That is the sound of the greatest small car in the world. No, not that one. This one. If you put 100 people in a room and ask them to name the world's greatest small car, I'm guessing about 99 of them would automatically just say Mini. But one wouldn't, and that would be me. To me, that title has always belonged to the original Fiat 500. The Fiat 500, or Nuova Cinquecento as it was known at the time, went on sale in 1957. That was before the Mini was any more than a glint in the eye of Alec Isagonis. And it was designed by no less of a genius, none other than Dante Giacosa himself. What he came up with was a family car about the size of a baking tray, which would nevertheless seat four, well, at least if you're not six foot four, and became the quickest, most efficient, nippiest, and fun way to cut through the traffic of Milan, Turin, and Rome that had ever been invented. It probably still is. But what gave it its real charm was the offbeat thrum of its tiny two-cylinder engine. And now, over 50 years later, Fiat's built another one. Only Fiat could market a car with two cylinders as a good thing these days. But, as we shall see, this new two-cylinder 500 Twin Air is a very good thing indeed. By using its clever multi-air electro-hydraulic valve system to reduce pumping losses and a teeny weeny little turbo, Fiat has produced an 875cc engine with more torque than its conventional 1.4 litre sister, and thanks to its 84 horsepower, not a lot less performance. But get this, it's over 30% more fuel efficient, stretching an extra 20 miles out of every gallon of fuel and with emissions of just 95 grams per kilometer, it's the cleanest non-hybrid petrol engine on the market. It makes the old 500 engine look pretty sick, to be honest. This particular car has the later uprated engine in it, which raised power all the way from 13 to 16 and a half horsepower. Not to 60 times weren't difficult, they were impossible. But none of this stopped the old 500 becoming loved by all who drove it. How does it drive? Exactly as you'd expect a rear engine car on an 1800mm wheelbase weighing less than a Caterham R500. Unlike many modern cars, you're never going to get bored driving an old 500. It keeps you so busy. The suspension throws you all over the road. The steering really could have come from a cart. The gearbox has no synchromesh. And as for the brakes, well, they're awful, but that doesn't really matter because the one thing you don't want to do in this car is slow down. Because once you slow down, you've then got to speed up again. And that's very difficult indeed. The new two-cylinder Fiat 500 is a very different proposition indeed. It has double the weight, five times the power and is in fact a very passable everyday car, something you'd never be tempted to say about the old one these days. In fact, after the old 500, this thing feels like something of a Rolls Royce. But so too is something missing from this new 500, that, that sense of connection, that sense of being part of the machine that was so integral to the experience of the old 500. Fact is, the new 500 doesn't ride or handle particularly well. It's not, in those regards, a particularly fun car to drive. So it has to rely on the charm of its looks and of that new engine to get by. The funny thing is, it gets away with it. You wouldn't believe what a new dimension a two-cylinder engine can bring to the 500, and it's one that appeals equally to the head or to the heart. No, the chassis's not up to much, but the car itself, I found myself really enjoying. Is it a worthy successor to the original 500? No, of course not, but it's not that kind of car. But is it another great small Fiat from that great long line of great small Fiats? Yeah, I'd say so.